feeling love for self and am I responding with that love for self and from self or do I not feel I'm worthy so I'm responding from the lack and deficit of love within myself that is going to create a great change in, in the outcome yes okay Jingle so, bells. so Jen says yes what's that she said yeah that she sense. said yeah now Kokomo is asking how do you stop your inner voice from making comments that hurt your self-esteem? That's a good one. So that's one of the things that I help people with, with auric clearings. And you can work on this yourself as well. But a lot of people, when they have, like I've, I did a show on this not too long ago about like implants in the ethereal body. People have almost like this looping that goes on in their brains where it's like a looping of dialogue and it's a very dark energy. Think of it as almost like an entity. And I've had people say that it's like a demon is in my brain and they're not that far off. It's literally like an implant entity, energetic influence in the brain that is creating the looping. That's one of the things that I help clients in clearing and releasing on your own. What you can do with awareness is you can start to catch that voice and just go, whoa, what is that voice? Like, that's not my voice. And you start to disconnect and disassociate from the voice. So it's in a sense, it's like, imagine you're a human and it's like you have something hosting in your energy field and it's talking, telling you to like kill yourself. I've had clients say this to me, like the voice was telling me to kill myself and, and it's really dark and it scares them. That you first thing you need to do is to connect and realize that is not me. It is like an energy that is inside and trying to influence me. And what I like to help clients with is clearing that out of their energy field permanently because it can actually create a lot of damage and destruction if it's not addressed. And if we don't have awareness, we can get to where we actually start to believe we're the voice. And we start to have issues where we become that dark voice and we think that we're against ourselves. So one of the things that I would encourage you is as soon as you notice that voice comes in, you tune in and you check in and realize that is not my voice. That is not me. And then you tune into your higher self consciously. Okay, higher self, what would be a more healthy thought about this? And if you really feel like you're stuck, call me, schedule an appointment or call a healer you trust and schedule an appointment. Because sometimes I was just talking with, um, who was I just talking with? One of my clients. Yeah, one of my clients yesterday. Uh, she was talking about, you know, she wants to come. And see me again for a clearing soon. And she oh. had one a few months ago. Oh. And she was like, hey, you boy. know, I just was talking to this guy and he was made it kind of make sense for me of why we go to different healers or why we I work with coaches. She said, what, what they said was, if you think about anybody in their life, like you look at a professional basketball player like Michael Jordan, or you see like Tiger Woods, who's a great golfer, or maybe some CEO of a company, and every one of them, they work with a coach or a mentor. Every one of them. They've had, Michael Jordan had how many coaches in his life that can help push him and help him expand beyond his comfort zone, help him to see his potential in a way that he can't see yet. And help him to also see where his his weaknesses are, where his vulnerabilities are, and where he's holding himself back. And so the way I look at what I do as a healer is I'm a mentor and a coach, a soul coach. I call it soul coaching for a reason because I'm helping you to connect to your divinity and helping coach you into your greatest potential, your greatest expansion. And it takes honoring that and realizing that sometimes we're doing the best we can, but it sometimes makes sense to bring in the coach that can see what we're not seeing. Sometimes we're so in our funk, we're so in the drama of our relationship problem or our financial struggle that we can't see beyond it. And a, men a mentor or a soul coach like myself will come in and we're not, emo we're not involved emotionally. So we're very neutral and we can observe in a bigger, expanded way to help you connect the dots in a way that maybe you weren't able to by yourself. So I think part of it's like looking at part of self-worth is 
Do I love myself enough to even allow someone to help me and to value that help, to value those soul sister groups and to value the yoga classes and to value the healing sessions? Because these are how these are modes of healing and expansion that are there for us. But if we don't feel we're worthy, we're going to put them last. We're going to procrastinate. And so if you feel like you can help address those issues on your own, go for it and do it. But it's just going to take awareness, constant awareness. And even when you work with a healer, one of the things I'm going to tell you after a session is, okay, you're feeling a lot more awesome now. You're feeling shifted. Your energy is at peace. You're more at ease. You're attracting like a magnet, all the good. But stay aware. Stay awake and aware because you could go home and that beloved comes in ranting and projecting and it can trigger you right back into your pain. Or you can catch it and observe it and go, whoa, I'm going to choose a happier thought instead of choose that destructive thought that makes me feel bad. So I hope that made sense. And I was going to actually call my beloved down here. So if you want to come join us, William, and chat for a minute, we're just on a roll there. Um, did that make sense to that person, Amnon? What was their name again? Beloved. Kokomo. Oh, beloved. Kokomo. That's a cool name. Yeah. And Cindy's saying, she's making a comment. She's saying, what she's saying about a coach slash mentor is true and is a lot faster than traditional therapy. Yes. Thank you, Cindy. And, and Kokomo, Cindy is, what's that? And Kokomo is saying, thank you. I will give that a try. Awesome. Thank you, Kokomo. Yeah. And actually, Cindy is one of my clients that I have mentored with, and she's done awesome and evolved and shifted so quickly. And I feel like so one of the things a lot of my clients do say um, is how they, like one girl, I remember she, in her testimonial, she was like, like Tanya, she said, I had one session with Tanya and she had a three hour aura clearing with me. And she's like, in one session, I got more from that session than 15 years of therapy. And I literally got tears in my eyes hearing her say that. But I've observed the clients I work with, and it's true. And I'm not ragging on traditional therapy. Everything has its place. But a lot of people, when they're going to therapy and they're just talking about their problem, they're kind of stuck in talking about the problem. With an art thing, we're not talking about problem. We're tuning into the energetics that are creating the problem. We're helping you find the core issue of the root of your issue so that we can pull that root out at the core and release it from your energy field, and it will change your life. But like Cindy was just commenting, I have people that will work with me just for you know one session that I don't really ever hear from them again. But the ones that I see more often, and I encourage them to connect more often, whether it's like they're coming in and we're mentoring, and this is my beloved William, by the way. Yeah. Hi, baby. Um, and if we're connecting you know, more often, it's just like if you're working with a basketball coach, if you're there practicing every day, you're going to be amazing in your transformation. If you don't, let's say you can't afford it daily, but you could go once a week with that coach, or maybe it's twice a month with that coach, you're going to figure out what works for you. But putting that time and investing in your growth and your soul's growth and potential, that is what's going to make you a superstar at whatever you're doing. So like William and I, our mission is we want to go into corporations this year and be helping corporations see how shifting into a mindful meditation um, approach with their team, whether it's a small company or a large company, is going to create an amazing shift in the collective of their vision. So if that team thinks that, you know, they're struggling in some way, but they just have all these dramas playing out in the office and no one knows what to do about them. That could create quite a downfall for that business and lots of unnecessary stress. A lot of their clients are depressed. They're at home sick. You know, they've got more anxiety and issues. But then you bring in a team that supports the individuals, helps them come into alignment. And then as a collective, they work together to be the superstar team at their game. They're going to thrive. And so really, whether it's us individually doing this or we're doing this as a like with a business group or a basketball team home. itself, working with a coach is going to really support your expansion and it's going to support your growth. And you're sometimes not going to see stuff 
that your coach is going to see because you're so in it and you might slip off the path and you haven't seen your mentor for a while. And then you're like, Oh yeah, let me get right back in there. And she's just helping remind me what works. She's helping remind me what helps me thrive. So it's really think of it that way. We're just there to help remind you how awesome you are. (laughs) So, yeah. And one of the things I want to mention is, uh, how first off grateful I am to be with somebody who embodies self love to the extent that Tanya does because uh, well for example in the in the time that we've been together I've had four or clearing sessions with her and uh, incrementally every single one has just allowed that greater and greater receptive receptivity for self love and just uh, that continuation of that evolution of self-love. And, and so it's been extremely powerful to obviously have her in my life. And for any of you out there that, again, uh, desire a soul coach or whatnot, it's extremely powerful stuff. And so one of the things I want to mention about that is in terms of the benefits of self-love in an in interpersonal relationship is something that she had touched on earlier is that, in past relationships, you know, I would, I would uh, compliment uh, a, a girlfriend or something like that, and it would be really difficult for her to receive that compliment with grace or gratitude, and, and it, it would be kind of a rejection or a disavowing of that compliment, like, oh, I don't believe you, or that's not true. You or, liar. Right, and so, but with that self-love and the fact that Tanya embody self-love as do myself it's like when we give each other compliments it's like oh thank you you know I honor you as well and so like an avatar I see you mm -hmm. it's really like I see you I really feel and Mm -hmm. see you yeah yeah exactly so it's very it just feels good to be in that energy of reciprocation one of the symbols that we use for our relationship as twin flames or kind of a holy relationship is the, the figure eight infinity symbol, because in terms of begin and yang or the give and receive, it's a constant circuit or flow of love. And, and again, it all starts and begins with that self-love. And so one, one other thing I want to mention too, in response to Kokomo about, um, about, you know, the inner voice of self-doubt or self-judgment. For me, <laughs> one, the there's two right things right. that work great in terms of counter counteracting that. One is knowing that every thought in regards to law of attraction has an equal and opposite thought that would be the exact opposite of that. So just, just higher. <laughs> so yeah, just having the awareness of, yeah. well, what's the Reverse opposite it. of that inner thought that was just uh, a self-judgment, like, oh, you're a loser. Well, or you can say, if you're aware of that, what's the opposite of that? Yeah, oh, you're a winner. That. That's, that's the first kind of tool or strategy. But the second one is just to go in your heart and silence that mind. And again, know that that thought or that that energy of the, the spinning in your mind is not you. Yes. You are a soul. And so if you just choose to quiet your mind instead of, you know, you, you can use the eagle and opposite spin strategy or technique or you can just go just into your center and go into your heart and just silence adios yes you know be still so yeah and and just go into that self-love state and if you struggle with that because a lot of times when i have meditation classes and yoga classes students in the beginning they struggle to silence their mind there's like my mind's so busy that's one of the things that i notice in people's auric clearings their mind's so quiet and still so that's something i can help with but ultimately will help you cultivate that in yourself so that at home, maybe you can't just be still right now and it doesn't come naturally, but maybe you put some calm music on and you just tune into the music or you tune into your breath in yoga. You go take a yoga class and you just listen to your breath or maybe you hear a bird singing and you're listening to that. It's putting your focal point on something soothing so that the mind is neutralized so that you're not aggravating and like feeding and fueling that low thought yeah absolutely and just and even taking a walk yeah and and, yeah and uh 
you know, I've, I've read how taking a walk, since yeah. you're utilizing both sides of your body, your legs and your arms and your walk, you're, you're balancing the left and right.